Hey y'all, Chit the Fathings here, almost as shocked as you are with this new 35mm lens from Siri. Except I had it for a little while longer to make this review. I also have more videos coming on uh, on how to make this lens even better than it already is. So hit subscribe and that little bell so you don't miss them out when they're out. I'm absolutely mind blown that these guys could put together not only one revolutionary anamorphic lens like no one has ever done before, but two of them in less than a year. The 50mm was pretty neat and since we, the people, clamored for something wider, they delivered a 35mm. Same as the 50, if you're craving for more anamorphics in your life, uh, this is definitely worth investing in. In this review, I'm gonna show you test footage, talk about its flares, coverage, overall performance, price point, and delivery schedules, and all the pros and cons of the cinematic machine. Considering the 50mm was series' first venture into big camera lenses, they're taking this in stride on this 35mm. Both lenses are pretty much the same size, although the 35mm is bulkier at 700 grams. Filter threads are the same, 67mm, and they also listen to our requests for video shooting, since this 35mm comes with a pair of gears for focus and aperture. They are super neat and get a great grip on the body. It's definitely a good sign to see that they're listening to the customers and reviewers. While we're talking about good stuff, why don't you hit that like button? Thank you. Moving on, aperture ranges from f1.8, crazy, to f16. And fo the focus ring has 180 degrees of throw with witness marks in both meters and feet. Minimum focus is the same as the 50mm, uh, sitting at 85 centimeters or 2.8 feet, which is a bit too far out for a 35mm, but I can see why they wouldn't focus any closer at the expense of even less anamorphic squeeze. If they keep working on other focal lengths, my bet is that minimum focus won't change on them either. If you're landing here without much prior anamorphic knowledge, Many anamorphics see reduced squeeze factor when approaching minimum focus. This one, for example, is marked for 1.33, but that's only at infinity. At minimum focus, we're looking at 1.25 times. While the 50mm came in three different mounts uh, for Micro Four Thirds, Sony and Fuji, this one is natively Micro Four, micro four Thirds. And if you want to mount it to something else, Siri designed the mount in a way that you can easily attach 
a different mount over top, like the E-mount I have here. There are eight screws holding the mount in place. To add a Sony or mirrorless Canon or Nikon, you need to take out the four outer screws, put in the new mount, which also features a very handy pin to keep alignment correct, and then reinsert the four screws. This lens also isn't and won't be compatible with EF mount. I'm not even answering comments about that. There's an upcoming video explaining why, if that wasn't clear enough yet. This mount swapping feature is so awesome, I've been asking them if it'll be implemented on the 50mm. If not, I'm looking into how to create something similar based on the MFD version of the 50mm, since it's the one with the shortest flange and the smallest mount. Anyway, subject for another video. I told you to subscribe already, right? This 35mm lens is also designed for APS-C or Super 35 sensors, so not full frame. By the way, with all this crop, squeeze and whatnot, what's our actual field of view? Well, when you use a 35mm and when you use a 35mm lens in Super 35 mode, it crops to match a 52.5mm lens. But because of the anamorphic block, the horizontal field of view uh, on the Siri is 39mm, while vertically it remains 52.5, creating some depth separation that anamorphics are famous for. Now, how do you get this lens? The crowdfunding campaign started today, August 3rd, and it runs for 30 days. The link is in the description. The lens sells for 600 bucks at the super early bird tier, then 649 as the regular crowdfunding price, and afterwards, you'll be able to get it at 800 bucks from major retailers like b and and Adorama, as well as a bunch of them will show up on eBay from people who back the project and change their minds. Now let's dive into performance. Shooting wide open does not hurt how this lens performs in terms of sharpness. And it being wider also increases depth of field, which pushes me to shooting wide open. An interesting thing I noticed is aberrations seem optimized for close focus, since it's tack sharp there and we lose a little sharpness as we rack to infinity. I think this is a pretty wise call when it comes to anamorphics actually, since the biggest challenge with scopes is shooting close range. That's where the best performance should be and not at infinity like a lens used for projection. Flares are consistent with the 50mm bright, vivid, blue, teal, uh, very Panavision C-series. If you're bothered by how saturated they are, you can pick them out in color correction. I have another video about that, just check the card on the screen now or the link in the description. In terms of distortion, the wider focal length makes the curved lines even more pronounced Screaming scoop! <laughs> Bokeh is still subtle since this is a 1.33 lens and the ovals are also smaller since it's a wider focal length. There's still some warping when you get to the sides of the frame uh, where Bokeh gets really squished and cut off, but I feel overall this one does better than the 50mm. Coverage is interesting. Designed for Super 35, it looks super awesome. But on the a7S II, that's limited to HD resolution. So I step up to 4K and full frame, and this is what you get. Then I'll cheat a little and use clear image zoom on the Sony to crop out the vignetting and still go a little bit wider than the original plan of Super 35, as you can see here. Siri is on a roll with their anamorphic releases, and I'm loving how this is making the format accessible and popular. This lens is small, relatively lightweight, definitely affordable, and it packs a punch in performance and ease of use when compared to most anamorphic adapters. Sure, it doesn't have EF mount, and yeah, it has a light squeeze factor, but I feel the pros defeat the cons by a landslide. I'm working on a couple other videos featuring this lens on how to make it go a little wider, plus a series of upgrades including how to make the footage look more squeezy. So subscribe now and you'll be notified when they're up. 
I'm also doing a live stream disassemble and overview on Wednesday at 11 a.m. PST, that's Pacific time, so stay tuned. What are your thoughts on the Siri 35mm anamorphic? What are you expecting next from Siri? I'd be very interested to see if they keep pursuing wider angles. 35mm on APS-C is nothing impossible using adapters. Even 35mm full frame can be done, but if they pull a 25mm, I'd be mind blown. <laughs> That's it for today. And don't forget to check back on Wednesday if you have more questions and watch me take this thing apart. Partially. Chit for out. Thank you.